So here's a map breakdown for day 254 of the war in Ukraine. Here is the map. Here are the three areas of kinetic activity within the last 24 hours. You have the Ukrainian counteroffensive here in the northeast. You have the Russian offensive here in the east in Donetsk and Luhansk. And you have the Ukrainian counteroffensive here in the south in the Kherson Oblast. This is happening within the four oblasts, and that is the Kherson Oblast, the Zaporizhia Oblast, the Donetsk Oblast, and the Luhansk Oblast. These four oblasts have been annexed. According to Vladimir Putin and Russia, no one else is recognizing it, but they're outlined anyways. And they also, as you can see, Russia does not have control or full control over any of them, despite stealing them or annexing them into their territory. So we're going to start in the northeast with Ukraine's counteroffensives. This is the Ukrainian counteroffensive. The main cities along this counteroffensive line that's under Ukrainian control is going to be Kupiansk, Barova, and Lehman. Here's the areas of the Ukrainian counteroffensive directions. Lots of individual pushing through Russian defensive lines, as you can see. Some, some areas the Russians are pushing back, and also here in Sevirsk. Some areas the Russians are pushing back and they're they've actually pushed back on ukrainian territory and every time they do so the ukrainians are able to advance further into russian territory so we're going to start here east of kupiansk so here's kupiansk the latest success of the ukrainian military here is going to be in mikolivka and there's so there's like three or four cities named mikolivka in ukraine but this one is specifically near the border of luhansk this is the kharkiv luhansk oblast border the Ukrainian armed forces are getting closer and closer to it here. The latest success is in Mikolivka here. This village, just to the northeast of Stepova Novosilivka. The Ukrainians and Russian armed forces are having a battle over the city of Stepova Novosilivka here. The Ukrainian armed forces are having to surround the city. They're having to go around it due to the Russian defensive lines. Okay, So the Russians are pushing back in a couple places. They've extended their, their forces into Tabivka and also south towards Koltarivka here is in the same region. This is the key ground line of communication that goes from Kupiansk all the way down to Bakhmut. Latest activity in the last 24 hours here. Ukrainians and Russian forces fighting over the territory around around Stepova Novotselivka. The Ukrainians have actually able to push north far into the Russian territory. And eventually this counteroffensive is going to swing around and connect with this one. And they're going to advance towards this city because they're, they're behind it now. To the east of Barova, just south of there, here's the Ukrainian controlled city of Barova. Ukrainians that have advanced on the other side of the highway here as well. Again, here in the counteroffensives, the Ukrainians have made it to these the other side of the border and are in Luhansk. All of these counteroffensives are well into the Luhansk Oblast. The, the territory that Russia had the most control over here in the east, they're losing territory every single day here. So this counteroffensive continues. Just last week, the Ukrainians here had liberated the villages along this front line, Kovlivka, Karmzdramivka, and Novodiany. That's important because the Ukrainians are working towards that same highway ground line of communication from Kupiansk as it connects to the city of Svadova in Luhansk and on down towards Bakhmut. So this is very important that these counteroffensives continue eastward as, as Ukraine's trying to get to that key ground line of communication and, and advance towards the Russian-controlled city of Svadova in Luhansk. It's slower. It's slower than what we saw over the last few months, especially in September. But the, t the, the ground's changing, the terrain is changing, the speed at which things are happening are just slowing down. We're working our way south from there. Here's the Ukrainian-controlled city of Lehman. And, and, and here I'm going to highlight in Tierney and Torske because this is the two satellite cities that these Ukrainian soldiers are advancing from now. They're cutting into this incursion by the Russian military. The Russians were able to push through here westward of Kremina. Here's the Russian-controlled city of Kremina and the Russian area where they advanced forward. The Ukrainians are doing their Thunder Run movement here as well, their flanking maneuver, because the Russians were able to establish a, a defensive position westward of Kremina. So they pushed through to the Russian territory, and we're likely going to be seeing these two counteroffensives connect here, which is going to be crucial because they're going to be very close to the city of Kremina 
after that happens. Crimean is important because again, it's on this ground line of communication that connects from Kupiansk to Svatova, to Kremina, through Rubenzin, through Severodonetsk, through Lysyshansk, all the way down to Bakhmut. All of these cities connect every single city along this front line from Kupiansk here down to down to Edvidka, actually, just on the outskirts of Donetsk. So all of these cities are along this highway. Yeah, the Russians can resupply from further eastward into the territory, but when Ukraine controls this highway, they're going to be able to resupply and control this entire front. That's why these cities are so important along this highway. So we're going to move a little bit further south from here, but I'm not really going to move the map. But I'm going to highlight Severodonetsk and Lysyshansk, and also the Ukrainian counteroffensives from Seversk. Their advancements eastward into Zolotorivka in Bilohorivka, which was the first city that Ukrainian armed forces advanced into when they had, had liberated a village in Luhansk and also in Dobrova. This counteroffensive is important because if they can push through into Lysyshansk, that's going to cause lots of issues with, with the Russians. They had cut Kremina off from Severodonetsk and Lysyshansk and also that key ground line of communication that, we had that I keep talking about. This counteroffensive here in Seversk has very incremental gains a very incremental successes things kind of go back and forth here right we're not seeing too many changes where, where we've seen some map adjustments and some changes in terms of what the map looks like is going to be in this pocket here and this pocket here and that's just um, when there's new territory liberated or there's new annotations they, they adjust that so we're going to go south from here now so those were two areas of some ukrainian success same with here, I almost forgot also, as part of this counteroffensive, we also have the Ukrainians that are advancing southeast of that, and have also, they've gotten to the eastern side of the ground line of communication in Ivano Darivka. Ukrainians have been able to get to the other side of that highway here and control a piece of it. Very important. They're fighting over it in multiple locations. Same here, just outside of Bakhmut. Very, very important. And once we get here and it becomes the T-1302 highway, it's back under Ukrainian control. And it leads right in to the Ukrainian-controlled city of Bakhmut, which is where we have multiple reports tonight from Bakhmut video reports, the, the, the 105 round, that mortar round that we shared on our Discord and Twitter and our, our Telegram channel and Facebook and YouTube. That, that the soldier that signed it from Orc Hunters and Mercado Media, that's the that's the defenders of the city of Bakhmut down here, and they're having some successes. So we're going to advance a little bit further south now. And this is the Russian offensive now, okay? So not, I, I know we're on the same... We're on the same front line, the same highway, but now we're at, we're in a different front, if you will, right? Same, it's all close by, all close together, but we just finished with the Ukrainian counteroffensives in the northeast, and I know they almost kind of touch now. We're getting to that point where the counteroffensives are starting to extend to the northeast of Bakhmut as well. Right now, we can't say that because Ukraine's still very much on defense here. They're very much reliant on their territorial defense forces. There isn't a counteroffensive effort happening here. But we have the Ukrainians pushing back, in, at least of the Russians outside of the city and northeast of the city near Solodar. The Ukrainians have pushed the Russians back and have liberated some territory. Territory there. We just finished the Ukrainian counteroffensive in the northeast. Next, we're going into the Russian offensive here in Donetsk. So, this is the Ukrainian controlled city of Bakhmut. Here's the Wagner private military contractors and hot dog boys military. Here's their advancement efforts, and all of their attempts at Bakhmut have failed. Their attempts north of Bakhmut have been dissipated now. In the, and like I said, the Ukrainians have actually pushed back at the Russian occupation here and have started liberating territory in this, in this region. It started with the factory just in the outskirts of Bakhmut to the east, and it's pushed through along this entire highway. So this, this entire ground line of communication here, this T-1302, once the Ukrainians are able to push through the town of Solodar, which is mostly under Ukrainian control. The Russians control the highway. Then they can get some supplies up to Seversk and what I've just finished talking about the Ukrainian counteroffensive. This highway is very important. The Ukrainians need to continue their advance onto the Russian military here 
onto this highway. Here's that T1302, bang, right there. So Ukrainians control this portion of it from Bakhmut to Solodar, and then just on the outskirts of Solodar here, those Russians, they control that portion of the highway for now. The Russians have had recent success here, occupying the city of Zadetsev, just to the south of Bakhmut, but that city has gone back and forth in Ukrainian and Russian control all summer. Next week, I could be saying the Ukrainians have advanced into Zadetsev and liberated. I just said that last week. The week before that, it was in Russian control. Two weeks before that, it was in Ukrainian control. Right now, as of the time of this recording, it's under Russian control. Okay, that's in Zadetsev. Here in Advidka, we've had we've had more Russian successes here. This is where the, the mobilized Russian soldiers are. They've had an increase of troop numbers in the region. So we're seeing more, more incremental gains by the Russian military. And it is incremental. And we're seeing it here around Pitsky, around the city of Edvika. They haven't been able to push through. The Ukrainian territorial defense forces around the city are holding strong. They're, the Russians are going all around Edvika right now. They're, they're pushing through. They had just taken this, they had taken control of Pitsky and Marinka here at the at the end of July, middle of July, and start of August. So it takes them months, months to advance even just a little bit. And they're using their conscripts right now. And the reports coming from the front lines and from those out there is it's just a meat grinder. So while we are seeing incremental successes from the Mobics and from the, the, the mobilized conscripts that Russia's thrown out here is in the separatist region and also here in, in Vuladar, it's just because they have numbers, right? Ukraine has quantity, quality. Ukraine is it has to use every single piece they have, every single number, every single soldier matters. Every single soldier they have matters. They don't have Ukraine doesn't have the force capabilities that in, in this region of the country, here in Vuladar, in Zaporizhia, in Edvidka, in Donetsk Oblast. They just don't have what they do up here. But again, once they are able to rotate this liberate territory in the northern Luhansk Oblast, they'll be able to push back at the Russians down here. But right now, they don't have that. They just don't have the numbers. When Ukraine gets a semblance of the numbers that they have here from this front line down here, we're, we could see some pushback and some changes. But with the, with the territorial defense forces that they do have, Russians have incremental successes, but they're mostly being held off here. And it's taking them months to accomplish what Ukraine is doing in, in weeks, right? Or in m multiple months. And Ukraine can do in a day that they did. There was a week in September, Ukraine went 30, 40 kilometers in one day. Russia's doctrine is to move 30 kilometers a day and they don't, they move, they move like 100 meters or 50, 50 meters a day and then they lose their 50 meters. They were, they were saying they were going to be moving kilometers. That's the, that's the Russian offensive efforts. We're seeing some recent successes from the Russian military here, but it is very incremental and we'll keep up on that. And that's in Vuladar and Donetsk. We'll stay up on that. The Ukrainian counteroffensive here in the south. Krivira, Mikolaev. Here is the Russian, excuse me, the Ukrainian counteroffensive directions. Krivira, southward. And then also the key Russian cities in the region. That's going to be Kherson and Novokohovka. The two bridge crossings that are very important in the region. The Kohovka Hydroelectric Dam and the Antonivsky Bridge. I'm going to highlight the, I'm going to highlight the rivers. These are not roadways. These are rivers in this region. The Inhluets and the Dnieper River. The, re the recent updates here in the south of the country is the fears of, well, Russia is putting fear into the residents of Novokohovka and then the Kherson Oblast saying that Ukraine is going to mine and destroy the Kohovka hydroelectric plant here in Novokohovka. That isn't true, but that is what Russia is telling the people there to have them leave and, and increase the number of evacuees from the area so they're they're pumping fear they're lying they're they're laying down a false flag which could come true russia could mine that plant and make their their prophecy come true or they could just keep it to rhetoric and
in words. Either way, the evacuations and the displacement of civilians in this region is increasing, and we're just waiting to see if Russia actually does destroy the Kohovka hydroelectric plant in Nova Kohovka. Beyond that, in Hirson, we haven't seen we haven't really seen a whole lot or haven't had a whole lot of updates and changes on the ground in the region. We've been tracking this for weeks and weeks and weeks, but we just haven't had any changes on the ground territorially from either side. Haven't had the Russians advance and gain any ground. We haven't had the Ukrainians push back and liberate territory either. So we're kind of at a stalemate here in the south as of the time of this recording. If you're enjoying these map breakdowns, please give a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're following us on Facebook. You're subscribed to the YouTube channel. These map breakdowns are posted every day at 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern. I am live every night at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, in which I do a three hour live stream doing a full map breakdown, going through all of the latest combat footage within Ukraine and going over all of the latest news that has come out throughout the day. I'm Andy Mercado from Mercado Media. Thank you guys again for supporting independent media and I'll see y'all on the next one.